POC Medical Systems is a six-year-old company uh, working in the point-of-care diagnostic space, and we are looking at transforming how uh, disease is detected, especially with breast cancer detection. Um, it was, it's, we are located in Livermore. The product uh, which we are getting ready to launch is the Mamo Alert, uh, and there's a machine with that which goes along the Pandora CDX. Uh, we have already done multiple trials. The market is pretty large. There's about 1.6 billion women over the age of 40 around the globe, and only 60 million, less than 4% of the women are screened today. Uh, the other issue is about 1.7 million women are found to have breast cancer out of the 60 million that are screened, and about half a million women die every year. And so there's a dire need for screening women across the globe at a much lower cost. We are, if you look at uh, places like India and China, those are probably the largest markets today. Uh, in China, there's about 350 million women. 7.5 million women are screened today. In India, there's 250 million women over the age of 40, and only 7 million are screened. Um, so what we have come up with is a portable solution. It's a lab in a box with a CD microfluidic technology with all the reagents pre-built in there, and in literally 30 minutes, looking at markers and doing predictive scoring, you're able to tell whether someone's got breast cancer or no. What we end up using is four different markers here, looking at the positive negatives. And then this is a manual scoring that we used to do. Uh, the technology was licensed out of Lawrence Livermore National Labs. We have tested approximately, I'll come to that in a minute. Uh, since then, uh, we have gone in and done training using machine learning. And the results you essentially get is a green for no cancer, yellow, where it's an equivocal, which basically means that there's a possibility of cancer because uh, some markers may be upregulated, and red is a clear-cut cancer. We have done seven studies in-house, and a study was done at Lawrence Livermore with 120 patients at Livermore, at Lawrence Livermore, and here in the seven studies we have seen an average of over 91% percent sensitivity and 93 percent specificity. If you look at each of the markers by themselves, they give a prediction of about 70 percent, less than 70 percent, so the highest accuracy you can get so far is with this technology. Where we are on the milestone, it took about six years for Lawrence Livermore and Sandia National Labs and UCO wine to develop the base technology, and then we licensed it in 2013, and today we are in the design for manufacturing uh, stage. We have done all the integration, and we expect to get this launched. We already have orders in India from the Indian government to screen 10 million women with a million CDs and uh, 1,800 machines. We expect to finish the design for manufacturing by the end of the year and then go into production and start shipping product early part of next year. We are in the process of getting clinical studies done. We have already got uh, five centers in India where the IRBs have been obtained, uh, patients have been recruited, in China, we are looking at four sites, with, and we have talked to NMPA. We are uh, talking to groups like Tiger Med, who will help us with the clinical studies. Uh, the CE certification has already been done. It's got to be redone once the design for manufacturing is done. Uh, and we have had discussions, early discussions, with the FDA, and they have asked us to apply for a breakthrough for this technology. Got a very seasoned, experienced team. Uh, 
this is my fifth company, John Walter, who's a finance, uh, who's our CFO, uh, Romano, who's our president, and VP of R&D is headed by uh, Andre Copaletti. We have raised about 21 million so far in the company, and we are raising our next round of 20 to 25, 20 to 22 million. In the meantime, we are stri trying to get a bridge of about two to three million as we go forward. Outcome capital has been retained as our uh, investment banker to get the 20 to 25 million raised. Uh, what the proceeds will be used for is for the design for manufacturing, the manufacturing, sales, marketing, and working capital. So in summary, we've got a technology platform which can really change the way medical diagnostics is done an experienced management team. We've got over seven patents that we have uh, filed and there are four patents that we have licensed from Lawrence Livermore. We've got a large market and we've got preliminary clinical validation. Um, this technology, by the way, applies for other diseases as well. Thank you. Any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Yes, thank you for the presentation. So breast cancer diagnostics, very big market, and you focus in the industry. So, um, um, so you mentioned the technology license from Liu Moore uh, National Lab. So, uh, but uh, this part, could you just elaborate more? The, uh, what's the uh, innovative part of so the technology? So what uh, everyone does is they're looking at genetic screening. What uh, Lawrence Livermore did was they looked at blood and they found four protein markers. They actually looked at about a hundred protein markers and narrowed it down to 25 and then further down to about four, five of them, which is HER2, OPN, CA15, and MMP2. And what they found was this combination actually can detect, um, using machine learning, you could detect the breast cancer, whether it existed or no. So you're not looking at CTCs, which a lot of people are trying to do. Exactly. Oh, okay. Each marker has, is normally present in the blood. Uh -huh. And what you're looking at is the change in level of these biomarkers and the combination. One marker, HER2, can tell you with 30 to 40 percent accuracy whether someone's got it. And so it's used for prognostic. But now if you combine these, that's what gives you the... Using blood. Exactly. So it's actually plasma. So in our CD, we do the separation of the blood and the plasma is separated out and the protein markers are captured out of the plasma. Uh, question, first of all, congratulations on being able to uh, demonstrate such high number and way over the other competitors, Thank right? You. And uh, also capability of raising $20 million is not easy, even though it's a lot in, in Silicon Valley. Uh, the question is, um, you started out the presentation saying that it is critical to have a technology that's more, if I use, paraphrase, uh, affordable. Yes. But you did not disclose how that compared to the existing Exactly. Product. So the standard of care around the globe is actually a clinical breast exam, which is a physical exam, not mammography. Mammography is the case out here. And if there is an, if there is mammography, because mammography is not available to the larger masses, most women do not go in and get mammography done because they have to disrobe in these countries. And even if they do have it available, the problem is women have to travel from rural communities to cities. The cost of mammography is about, in a place like China or India, it's over $100. In the US, it's about $300 a patient. The cost for our test is less than $5. That's great, so about 20 times. That's right. Um, this includes all the distribution needed. Everything, the cost to manufacture it is, to manufacture a disc is about six to seven dollars. We are selling it to our distributor in India for 15. The instrument 
It costs us about $300 to make and we sell it for $1,500. So then the margins in, are pretty big. In this case, um, there's several questions that I did not quite capture from the presentation. Number one, you're using AI. Right? That's correct. But you've only had uh, 150 to 200 patients data tested. No, that's the initial study that you saw. The, the initial study at Lawrence Livermore was 150. Uh -huh. And after that, we have done a total of 850 samples have been tested. And from the theory you have, 850 is large enough a number to yes. create a model. So if you, if you look at the model, the way it's created, so manually it was tested and then the model was created. The model requires about five, 400 to 500 patients to create that model. It's using DNN tensor logic. I see. Um, one last question. Uh, uh, the company was founded in 2013. Right. And you've uh, spent about 20 million, a little bit over 20 million dollars. That's correct. Uh, was that to be used to prove the concept of the science or to collect data or to do manufacturing, prototyping, or to, all of those? To all of those, to mm. get it to this point. And now what we are working with is a partner in Russell Keimer called Falcon Technologies, to which makes CDs and DVDs. They're repurposing that to manufacture these CDs. And so we, are al we have already got an LOI with them. We have got an LOI with the Menian Group in China as well to uh, to have this launched with many in 650 uh, health checkup centers. Have you encountered uh, practice, medical practice, uh, we use uh, a radioactive uh, glucose as part of marker to detect the cancer? Is that so very efficient? <laughs> no, no. We, we are using protein markers which actually are elevated when breast cancer happens. So, for example, HER2, her is uh, when someone's got high HER2, then they're treated with Herceptin, and so on and so forth. So these markers are already FDA approved, treatments for them are already there. So that's all we are using. We're not inventing any new markers. It's the combination which Lawrence Livermore has developed, and we have taken that and we have put it onto a portable system. That is our innovation, bringing the combination of markers which Lawrence Livermore developed the UCI and Sandia technology, which is the microfluidics on a CD, those have been brought together by us. The, the research was done by these national labs, not by us. Just came up with one more question. Sure. Your previous two ventures, one was in Malaysia, the other was in India. Mm -hmm. This is uh, the third one, and it's based here in Silicon Valley? That's or right. This is my fifth one. Fifth my one. my uh -huh. first one was with my brother, it's a company called Seprogen, which we took public in 94 on the NASDAQ. Then in uh, 89, 90, I started with my father, a company called Scanus, which was sold to R2 Technologies, which was bought by Hologix. That's the computer-aided diagnostic for breast cancer. So the grandfather patents are all held in my father's name. Um, and then... Uh, the other company was Actus Biologics, which is in India, and uh, Telesto Diagnostics in Malaysia. This is here. What's the current headcount distribution throughout geographies? We, well, we have about 10 people in the company, so we've kept it low. We have uh, subcontracted out everything to get it done. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.